An inequality is a sentence that shows that two quantities are not equal. For example, 5 not equal to 3. There are four other inequalities that are also useful for comparing numbers. Less than, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to. These are really useful also for describing sets of numbers. Today we're going to use this to describe solution sets. Let's take a look at our first exercise. In our first exercise, we want to graph the solution set x is greater than 5. This is simple to do. All we need to do is take a number line and shade everything that's greater than 5. We have to be careful at the end point, specifically at 5. For someone looking at this graph, it's hard to tell whether or not 5 is included. We clarify this by using this rule. If the point is included, we make a solid dot. If the point is not included, we make an open dot. Because in the set x is greater than 5, 5 is not included, we make an open dot at 5. That clarifies any confusion that our reader might have. In our second exercise, we want to graph the set x is less than or equal to 7. Once again, all we have to do is shade on the number line the values less than or equal to 7. It would be hard for our reader to look at the graph and know whether or not it included 7, so we'll use the same rule that we did before. In this case, x is less than or equal to 7. Equal to indicates that it's included, and so we make a solid dot on the number line at 7. This clarifies any questions that our reader might have. Exercises 3 and 4 are for you to try. Please pause the video here and complete exercise 3 and exercise 4. In exercise 3, we want x is less than 37 fourths. 37 fourths is 9 and 1 fourth. We shade everything that's less than 9 and 1 fourth, and we have an open dot at 9 and 1 fourth because it's not included. Exercise 4 has all values greater than or equal to 3 halves. 3 halves is 1 and a half. We shade the number line for all values greater than 1 and a half, and we include a solid circle at the end point to indicate that 1 and a half is included in the set. In exercises 5 through 8, we're given a graph and we're asked to write the inequality. In exercise 5, we can see that everything greater than negative 5 has been shaded. We also see that there's a solid circle at negative 5, which means that x is greater than or equal to negative 5. How about the others? Can you write an inequality to represent those? Please pause the video here and complete exercises 6 through 8. In exercise 6, we have x is greater than negative 10. All numbers larger than negative 10 are shaded, and there's an open circle which indicates it's only greater than, not greater than or equal to. Exercise 7, we have x is less than or equal to negative 2. All values less than negative 2 are shaded, and there's a solid dot at negative 2. Exercise 8, we have x less than 6. We have an open circle at 6, which indicates that that value is not included. Now, let's talk about compound inequalities. A compound inequality is an inequality that contains two separate inequalities brought together. These two inequalities are connected by the word and or by the word or. In this exercise, we have two inequalities, x is greater than negative 3 and x is less than or equal to 5. The word and indicates that we want to find the values that are in both of the inequalities. Take a look at this. You'll see what I mean. If we graph x is greater than or equal to negative 3 on the number line, we have a graph that looks like this. If we graph the second inequality, x is less than or equal to 5, we have this graph here. Now take a look at the values that those two graphs have in common. If we take those common values and we put them on their own number line, we now have the compound inequality x is greater than or equal to negative 3 and x is less than or equal to 5. When we have the word and, we're simply looking at the intersection of the two sets, the values that the two inequalities have in common. In this case, the numbers that are in common are numbers that are both greater than or equal to negative 3 
and less than or equal to 5. If you have a number that meets both of those criteria, then it is in the set given by this inequality. In exercise 2, we have a compound inequality. x is greater than 3, and x is less than or equal to 9. We know that because it's an and, we want the values that meet both criteria. In this case, we want numbers that are both greater than 3 and less than or equal to 9. We can identify that on the number line. Please pause the video here and graph the inequality on the number line. We begin by graphing the first inequality, x is greater than 3. Next, we graph the second inequality, x is less than or equal to 9. Because this is an and, and we're looking for the intersection, we look for the values that are in both. That's the interval between 3 and 9. Exercise 3 is for you to try. Please pause the video here and graph this inequality. In this exercise, we have x is greater than or equal to negative 7 and x is less than 4. We're looking for the values that are both greater than or equal to negative 7 and less than 4. In other words, the intersection of those two sets. We began by graphing each of the inequalities separately and found the part that they had in common, the intersection. That intersection is the inequality x is greater than or equal to negative 7 and x is less than 4. When working with compound inequalities that contain the word and, you might sometimes see a different notation. Take a look at the first exercise that we did with x is greater than or equal to negative 3 and x is less than or equal to 5. We shade it on the number line and we see that the shaded area is between negative 3 and 5. x is between those two values. If we identify the two endpoints, negative 3 and 5, and we consider the idea that x is in between them, all we have to do is add a couple of inequalities and we now have a nice notation that shows x between negative 3 and 5. It's important to remember that we'll always use the less than or the less than or equal to symbols when we're using this notation. This notation is equivalent to the original notation that we used. They're synonymous, so it's, it's good to be familiar with both of them. Can you write this notation? Take a look at exercise 2 and 3. See if you can write these using a single compound inequality. Please pause the video here and complete this exercise. In exercise 2, we identify our endpoints as 3 and 9. x is in between them. We use a less than symbol for the first inequality because we have an open circle at 3. We use less than or equal to for the second one because we have a closed circle at 9. In exercise 3, we identify our endpoints as negative 7 and 4. x is in the middle. We use a less than or equal to next to the negative 7 because we have a closed circle at negative 7. We use a less than at 4 because there's an open circle at 4. Now that we have inequalities involving the word and figured out, we need to consider the word or. The word or indicates that at least one of the statements must be true. In other words, the values are in one of the inequalities or in the other. Consider example 4. x is less than or equal to negative 3 or x is greater than or equal to 5. In this case, we can graph the first inequality, x is less than or equal to negative 3. We graph the second inequality, x is greater than or equal to 5. When we put these together, we have the complete inequality, x is less than or equal to negative 3, or x is greater than or equal to 5. The truth is, or is very simple. You simply graph both of them, and that's all you have to do. As long as your values are in one of the inequalities or in the other, it's in the compound inequality. Exercise 5, we have x is less than or equal to 0 or x is greater than 3. Please pause the video here and graph the compound inequality. We began by graphing x is less than or equal to 0. Next, we graph x is greater than 3. Those two combined give us the compound inequality, x is less than or equal to 0, or x is greater than 3. Any number that's in one of the sets will satisfy the compound inequality. How about exercise 6? Can you graph that inequality? Please pause the video here and complete that exercise. 
In exercise 6, we have x is less than 2, or x is greater than or equal to 5. We graph each of the inequalities individually, and we bring them together, and we have the compound inequality. Once again, as long as a number is either in the green or the pink inequality, one or the other, it satisfies the compound inequality and makes it a true statement. So now we know all about inequalities. We know that an inequality is a sentence that shows that two numbers are not equal. We often use less than, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to in order to compare numbers. We also use them to describe sets of numbers. When we have two or more inequalities connected by the words and or or, we have a compound inequality. With the word and, we look for the numbers that the two sets have in common, the intersection. We also know that when we have the word and, we can write it using a special notation. When we have the word or, we simply look at each of the inequalities separately. If numbers are in one of them or in the other, then they're in the compound inequality. This is everything you need to know in order to get started working with inequalities.